What's up, everyone, and welcome back to episode two of Out of a Hat, the show dedicated to learning and discovering video game history by randomly selecting games and doing a deep dive into how they came to be. My name is Chris. I go by CW719 pretty much everywhere, and today we're going to take a look at a strategy RPG called Natural Doctrine. If you enjoy the show, please hit the like button and subscribe to see more of these videos, reviews, impressions, and what I consider to be the most comprehensive video game release schedule on the internet. You can also catch me live on Twitch Tuesday through Friday from 9 a.m. Central Time to 4 p.m. Central Time. You can also find me on most of the socials. And finally, if you want to support what I do, head on over to my Patreon and consider supporting me there. That's out of the way. Let's get into it. Natural Doctrine, spelled capital N-A, lowercase t, capital U-R-A-L, space, capital D-O-C, lowercase t, capital R-I-N-E, and no, I don't have any clue as to why the T's are lowercase, is a tactical turn-based JRPG developed by Katakawa Games LTD and published by NIS America. It released on the PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4, and the PlayStation Vita in 2014. Let's start by reading the back of the box from the PS Vita edition. In a savage world, are you fit to survive? Strategically link with your teammates, face off against towering monsters, and hone your squad's ability to take on whatever the world throws at you. That description is not helpful. So let me try my best to give you a better idea. You play Jeff, who is a Bergman. Bergmen are professionals tasked with raiding mines to collect Pluton, a mineral that bestows magical abilities to humans. This is especially important now because humans have been backed into a corner and are actually facing extinction. It doesn't take long for Jeff to get wrapped into a conflict that encompasses far more than mineral collecting. The minute-by-minute gameplay has you exploring various areas that utilize a grid layout but not like other SRPG grids. Instead of having several smaller grids making up the larger play fields, you instead have large squares in which you can establish your team. There are typically enemies strewn about, chests lying around, and objects to interact with. The game, while slow and deliberate in its strategy mechanics, injects aspects of dungeon crawling as well by hiding secret areas, splitting paths, and adding events that change your odds of success. The discovery and exploration is an interesting addition to a game like this, and it makes each area a little more interesting. Looking at any tactical or strategy RPG though, the combat really makes or breaks the entire experience. That's no different here. While I admittedly am not high on SRPGs as a whole, tactics and strategy aren't really my thing, this combat system is tough as nails. It's difficult to wrap your head around, there's a lot of layers to the combat, and based on other people's opinions of the late game stuff, some of those mechanics take a long time to really get a good handle on. I can say that the team links and multipliers do add a lot to the gameplay, but looking at a field of crisscrossing lines and moving text, and then staying on top of the order in which things will play out is an intimidating thing for sure. I actually played the version that was patched to make the game less difficult and still had a hard time. Again, not really my genre of choice, but this game is considered hard by diehard fans as well. Natural Doctrine does have a couple of other features included as well. The first is multiplayer. I didn't get a chance to try it out myself, but it involves monster capturing and a card game mechanic. The combat plays out similar to the single player mode, though again, as I wasn't able to check this mode out, I can't speak much more about it. The other nice feature that the game had was cross-play and cross-saving during a time where those features were less common. Cross-compatibility worked between PS3, PS4, and Vita. Now let's talk a little more about the developer. Natural Doctrine was the first game released by developer Katakawa Games. If Katakawa sounds familiar, you're probably thinking of the parent company that actually bought From Software in 2014. Katakawa Games is an offshoot of Katakawa Shoten, which is a further offshoot of Katakawa Future Publishing, the parent company that delves in magazines, film, manga, novels, and video games. While Natural Doctrine was their first sole release earlier in 2014, they were co-credited alongside Experience Incorporated with the development of Demon Gaze for the PS4 and PS Vita. Katakawa Games has since put out the last couple RPG Maker games, The Lost Child, and Demon Gaze 2. Their most recent release was a mystery visual novel called Root Film, released in 2020 for the Switch and PS4. 
Overall, the game wasn't received incredibly well. On Metacritic, it currently sits at a 53 for the PS4 version and a 60 for the Vita version. The biggest criticism is tied to the difficulty, with some reviewers thinking that even hardcore strategy fans will be sorely tested by the unforgiving nature of the game. Again, the patch that was released does simplify things a bit, but it's still by no means a cakewalk. The other criticisms fell in line with muddy, unimpressive graphics and a story that isn't very engaging. In my two hours with the game, I tend to agree with those main complaints. I already touched on the difficulty a bit, but the graphics were not impressive, even for PS3 standards, and while I could only experience so much in my short time with it, I wasn't really even introduced to any semblance of a story in the early parts of the game. Ultimately, Natural Doctrine is not a game for me. It might not be for casual fans of the genre either. If this game is going to cater to anyone, it's more than likely going to be the folks that are really into SRPG games and don't mind the effort that it'll take to truly understand the layered systems. Even those people will likely be pushed a bit. As an additional point, there was a free DLC released for the game called Natural Doctrine Into the Gorian's Den, which allows you to take on the deadliest beast in the land, the Queen Bee. Natural Doctrine is a game that nestles itself perfectly into a genre of games that I don't really care for. Despite that, I've recently found myself becoming more intrigued by SRPGs and may dip my toe back in the water at some point, it just won't be with this game. If you already subscribe to PlayStation Now, then there's no reason not to at least try the game. But I wouldn't encourage anyone other than the most hardcore tactical strategy RPG fans to dive in. If you'd like to experience something similar, maybe consider the Valkyria Chronicles series? I noticed some similarities and I think that as a whole, the series has been pretty well received with most of its entries. Thanks for checking out episode 2 of Out of a Hat. Let me know your thoughts and opinions. Also, if I miss something, let me know. We'll be back before long with another episode involving giant beasts, lots of shooting, and roguelike elements. Until then, consider becoming a patron to get early access to future shows, and follow me on all the socials. We'll see you soon.